the glorious truth of Father God is overshadowing us tonight. It's October the 24th, 2015, and he's given us a beautiful message about his person, his personhood as God and as our Father. As I was worshiping with Jesus, along with Terry McAlman's song, there came a point where God the Father was standing to the left of Jesus, and he held me and put his arm around me, and with a sweeping motion with his hand, he said, Do you see all of this? And as I looked around to what he was motioning to, I saw all the forms of beauty and creation that he had created. All the glories of heaven were just laid out before me. The trees, the horses, the gems, the minerals and waterfalls, the birds and creatures, gazelle and deer, antelope, architecture of all sorts, from log cabins to multi-level dwellings and palaces. Everything glittered and glowed as if it were alive from the inside out. Father began, the concept of me and who I am is grossly lacking. When I created man, I created a perfect set of elements and life forms to satisfy beauty and functionality, that he would find an environment suitable to his liking and joy and growth. You know how you fashion little play places for your little kitties and how you spend time thinking about what they'll love and enjoy. Yes, that is what I did when I created Earth, a suitable dwelling place for man, Earth, rich in minerals, life forms, and spectacular beauty, fulfilling as any created object could be, from the pungent odor of sagebrush to the delicate fragrance of the violet, from the thundering waves of the ocean to the quiet little trickle of headwaters of a mighty river, melting snow coursing its way down the mountain and picking up volume and velocity with every tributary added to it. I made this earth a paradise, my little dove, a paradise for man to enjoy. Doesn't that say something about my personality? Doesn't that get your attention? Do you know I am there when you discover a dewdrop hanging from a blade of grass? Do you know what I am doing? I am discovering it with you and rejoicing in your wonder because I put that dewdrop in the grass for you to discover. And oh, the joy I feel when you find it and give praise and thanks to me and give praise and thanks to me. Just the way you've hidden catnip in different places on their little playhouse. You want them to go there because you have created consolation and pleasure for them there. And so when they find the goodies and lay down snuggled up the way you imagined they would, when you see that, you flow inside with happiness, and it's a joy to behold. People have made me so sterile and fierce. Yes, I am fierce where there's injustice and violence, I can be terrible, more terrible than anything your little human heart can conceive of. But with the simple, I am simple. With the innocent, I am innocent. And with the tender and merciful, I too am tender and merciful. I looked that up at Psalm 18. With the kind, you show yourself kind. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. With the pure you show yourself pure, and with the crooked you show yourself astute. Claire, you are manifesting my Godhead when you are kind and merciful. You are manifesting that part of me I gave you, nurturing it, becoming like me. That's the point of this journey, from glory to glory. And I found that in Second Corinthians 3. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. He continued, How can one look into the face of a newborn and think I am not tender? I have created all things for your enjoyment. 
because all of these things embody and reflect who I am. The world is absolutely loaded with who I am. So shall I stiff arm the most beautiful of all my creation, children, men, and women? These exquisite creatures fashioned after my very own self, shall I hold them back behind a wall of fire seemingly great and terrible? Or shall I embrace them as Abba Father? At this point, um, Father God began weeping. These are my children, Claire. I long to embrace them. I ache with love for my children. Oh, how I want to embrace them. But they have this image of me as a great and terrible God. Do you know who I am great and terrible to? I thought immediately the devil. And he said, that's right, you guessed it, Satan. To him and his rebellious angels, I am sheer terror. That's why one person using my son's name can put to flight an entire army of devils. Yes, when my son is roused, burning anger like lava from the fires of a volcano come down and burn and scorches them, hideously torturing them. That's why they run. If they don't, if they have the temerity to oppose that name, liquid hell falls on them and consumes their members. Then they are disabled for a very long time, and when their master sees that they were disabled, he becomes wroth with them and tortures them even further. He is the embodiment of absolute cruelty. Nothing and no one approaches him in cruelty and hatred. Everything I ever created he hates. He hates his demons. He hates mankind. He hates the earth, from the most delicate flower to the snow-capped peaks. He is wroth with hatred. That is why everything is deteriorating around you. These are the final hours and days of his reign on earth, and what he has come to do he must do quickly because his time is very short, nearly at its end. This is why he is rallying the far reaches of the universe, inhabited by demons of every kind and description. Before I held it closed before him, but now it has been opened, because I will gladly call together all these monsters to destroy them once and for all. The point I'm wanting to make is that I love my children tenderly, and I want them to receive me as their daddy, truly, for them to approach the throne of grace, for they're clothed in the righteousness of my Son. I want them to look upon my face and see the love that tenderly burns for them. I want them to see my expressions, my laughs, my crying, my wonderment as they discover the delights I've created for them. I want to put a stop to this far and distant God whom they idolize as an image untouchable. I want them to see me as I truly am towards them, gentle, loving, embracing, covering, protecting, leading, and always dwelling with them, each and every one. I'm not a vapor unfathomable. I created vapors unfathomable. But I am not that. I made you in my image. That's what I look like. That's what I am like. Now it should be obvious that I sent my only begotten Son to represent who I truly am in the flesh, in actions, deeds, and truth. And there was only one time when he was mighty and scary, and that was with the scribes and Pharisees and the money changers that had locked up the secrets of my loving heart in their coffers of greed and avarice. They wanted my people to fear me, not love me, they use fear to control and to keep them submissive to their wishes. But, Father, did you not show yourself that way in the wilderness as being awesome and terrible? He answered me, When was I a terror to my own people who were obedient to me? It was the ones who hated law and order, who hated control or boundaries, who wanted to side with Satan and run free in debauchery 
Those were the ones I was great and terrible to, as the earth swallowed them up. But to the meek, the humble, the obedient, I am a tender daddy. If you could but see the war that was raging with demons in bodies on earth before the flood, you would understand so much more. I would not be falsely accused of slaughtering what was innocent because everything they created was anything but innocent. If you could see the terror and pain caused to tiny infants and children, the oppression more terrible than this world has ever seen, the reign of terror and the transhumanism, you would understand the orders to slaughter. All was contaminated with demons and mutated clusters of wickedness and horror. Yes, they tampered with DNA. They are even responsible for the genetic tendency to homosexuality. Anything they could do to insult the beauty of man and woman coming together and giving birth. Anything was cause for great rejoicing. And that endures even to this day. And they are still rejoicing. This whole gay liberation movement is the culmination of their tampering with DNA thousands of years ago. Father, does that mean that people are born that way? He answered me, They are born with a cross to carry. Genetically, they tend to be neutral in sex. Therefore, it is a great cross for them to curb the unhealthy appetites that are fueled by demons. Yet I have given each and every one the ability to reject that tendency to sin and do what is right. Where sin abounds, grace abounds even more, if they will have it. That can be found, by the way, in Romans 5.20. The point is, he continued, Satan's rule on this earth is about to come to an end. I want people to know I am their father and that if they seek me, they will see my face and they will see my smile. I am Jehovah God and the tenderness with which I love them, they cannot and you cannot fathom, not even totally with grace. You merely scrape across the surface, but in heaven you shall know even as you are known. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I have been fully known. That's 1 Corinthians 13, 12. He continued, All aberrations will cease. Everyone will be as I created them to be. The earth will be filled with my glory, and peace shall reign everywhere, from the deepest, darkest cave to the mountain tops, peace shall reign. But Father, doesn't Scripture say that you live in unapproachable light? He answered, Unapproachable in your human estate, yet not unapproachable in your glorified state, and not unapproachable to my children who seek me in spirit and in truth. To them my glory is hidden, that they may feel safe in approaching me. To them, I am their father. You being at somewhat of a handicap, never having a father, don't really know what that means, but they know what it's like to have a father. Oh, don't be afraid to come to me, my children. Please do not be afraid. Allow me to hold you and rock you in my arms as a newborn babe. Allow me to sit and speak with you, giving you counsel you should receive from your father, reassuring you of my love. Oh, far too many of you have been stuffed into the stiff, ugly suit of self-hatred and condemnation. I want those clothes off of you. You should be wearing the garments of praise and salvation. Yes, when I see you approach, I see Jesus not the sinner you once were. I see you clothed in his robes, pure, beautiful, and righteous. So come forward now, my wearied ones. Come to your daddy and let me be a father to you. I am your father. Allow me the room to function as your father. Do not continue to push me away as some unapproachable energy, 
some nebulous, all-knowing power. That which other people worship as me is not me at all. It is merely my power holding the universe together. They hook into that vibration and think it to be me. But it is not me. You are created in my image. Set aside these lies instituted by Satan. Set them aside and embrace the truth. Your real eternal Father, I am. And as for you, my children, I wish for you to cease isolating me as the unapproachable deity. When the veil was rent, so was the barrier between you and I. The blood of my son purchased from me a return to the state of Adam and Eve in the garden before the fall, where I used to walk in the cool of the evening in glory in my creation and fellowship with my children. Come back to me in this way. My son has paid the price, and I'm calling you back into the light of my love, back into the fellowship, walking and talking with me, even as it once was in the beginning with Adam and Eve. So put away your fears and come to me. And I had an experience with God the Father that I wanted to share with you briefly, and this was, I think, 20 years ago. I had a dream, and in the dream, my father came to me, and we walked along the beach. He talked to me and counseled me, and there was just such a sweetness about him. He was just so wonderful. And I remember we went to a jewelry store, <laughs> and there was a ring there that he was going to buy for me. And it's interesting, when my mother passed away, she gave me a ring that my father had bought for me with a huge aquamarine heart in it. Anyway, um, I woke up from that dream just so steeped in joy, and I knew that that was God the Father coming to me. The other experience that I had was just a couple of short years ago, and I wrote a song commemorating that experience. It was just amazing how he embraced me and made me feel so comfortable in heaven. So that's what this song is about. Come to me Can you see Just how much I love you Hear your free Just to be All you've ever hoped for
You are home. 